right, here it starts. Got an old frame, old gas tank, rear frame, wheels. I gotta get these polished up to a uh, mirror finish because we're gonna do a translucent black, which will make it look like gunmetal. We'll get these hubs done. We're gonna have some wheels that look similar to this, but they'll be a, like a, a gunmetal. So the, the polish shines through. Excited about that. So I'm heading over to Powder Coat to drop off the freshly polished wheels. This is something that I, this is a dude that I've never used. My last powder coater, he takes like a month to get anything done. And this dude is gonna do it in like four or five days. And I know, procrastinator. The other cool thing is Evan, FLP, he's here local. He's got a bunch of parts for the build. And he's always, he's got this new, I think it's called a Sherco electric bike. I wanna see that. He's Mr. Electric like me. We love electric stuff. That electric ruckus from the keys, so sweet. All right, so doing that, and then I have a seat. We're gonna take a, the seat to get done. So a lot of things running around today. Let's freaking do it. Oh yeah, the hub without bearings so we can get them powder coated. Black stuff, tail light kickstand, bunch of cool stuff. I'll show you guys that when we start to build it. I met my buddy Aldo's shop. He does upholstery, obviously. Freaking upholstery coming out of his ears. This is what we're doing for the, uh, we're doing a, this, this blue, we'll do a French stitch and then this material. He's gonna, we're gonna do a little bit different, but we're a little bit crunched on time. We'll just do a French stitch there. You'll see it, pretty sweet. Aldo's the guy though, he's been doing this for like 30, 40 years. I'm running around, round, round like a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> so we got step one done. We got everything cut off, but not flush, just cut off enough so that we can smooth it out. See what I did? That's not even close to flush. So I cut it down with a just a cutting wheel, not super close as I showed you, and then we've got our 90 degree. Next step is I'm gonna take this type of bit and uh, I'll get it down fairly close to the, the rounded part of the frame, and then I'll take this guy and smooth it out. So that's cool. The cool thing is, is you can't do this with your powder coating, but if you're painting, you can use a Bondo type material to smooth it out. Otherwise, you gotta be really, really freaking careful not to go too far into that frame um, when you're cutting here, because if you do, you're gonna get a divot. And when you powder coat, it's not gonna be smooth. So this is where you gotta take a lot of time, especially back here by the tail light. But all of these places are super important. Here it is. It's not completely smooth, a little wavy, but that's okay for me because I'm gonna do, what I could do is hand sand it to make it perfect if I was gonna powder coat it. But I'm gonna go over this whole frame with some like uh, Bondo and then we'll paint it. So this will all be perfect. That's probably about 90%. And then the last step would be come in with like some, uh, some I don't know, uh, 100 grit sandpaper and smooth it out so you don't feel any lumpy lumps. Everything's done. I did leave the little, the old coil bracket because I might use that, but uh, get a visual on what you need to cut off your frame. These uh, frames are different from year to year, like a 2003 frame up to 2006 or 2002 to 2006. Won't have like this bracket. It'll have two of the ones I took off here. So they'll look a little different, but in a nutshell, this is what we're, we're going after. Everything's smoothed out. If you're gonna powder coat it, you definitely need to make sure that that's hand sanded smooth. <laughs> you like my earplugs, freaking napkins. I couldn't find my earplugs. Uh, 
The cool thing is, is these frames are pretty dang cheap. If you buy them directly from Honda, the rear frame, that, that rear frame doesn't have the VIN number on it, so you don't have to worry. So the cool thing is, is you can buy a frame, do all that, and then get it ready, and then you'll have an extra frame when you take your ruckus. I would recommend choosing the, uh, the older frame under 2006, because it has less tabs for you to grind off. Nice. My little notes to build our pro harness. That's what I'm doing right now. Got everything kind of measured out. Here's our little board. I clean that up. This is the pro harness. I know it looks like a little bit of a rat's nest now, but everything is plug and play. The only thing I didn't do is at the very end, since I'm gonna tuck the harness, I didn't add any ends to that. We've got our right hand controls and our rectifier regulator. My secret notes. There is one thing that I'm gonna to add to this that I haven't done, and this is our pulser pump. Cause this, the last one was a fuel injected version. This is a pulser pump to run the OEM fuel pump on basically anything. This is a module. All you need is power in and it'll pulse the pump. And then also I'd like to get the fuel light to start working because we're gonna uh, run, we got our high beam light that's gonna go in this, the stock area. And then we've got our low fuel light. So those two, and this will be a little switch for our um, LED lights that we put up. That's pretty sweet. Here we go. I got all the stuff ready to prep. I got a freaking mess over here. I got all I, some battery boxes, a bunch of parts. Just basically, I, it's a mess. So what I need to do is I've got everything. I need to start sanding. You know, there's some imperfections here, like this little dent. All these things need to just be covered in a uh, like a bondo so that I can smooth out all of this. So that's what I'm gonna do. Nah. <laughs> Part I hate the worst is prepping. Getting her dialed in. Got this stuff done already. Should be nice and smooth. And then we could primer it and then paint it. Here's a little like uh, hack. So I'm gonna make a little makeshift paint booth. So I got the little box fan, HEPA filter in front of the box fan. Now, paint particles aren't going out and landing on cars and whatever else is out there. Here's the rear frame. See all of this? Like this is completely smooth, really freaking smooth. But you wouldn't know that unless you used a block. So like for instance, I'm using this. It's kind of a, to make a long story short, it's flat. So when you're sanding it, your fingers are not going into the metal. You got a flat surface, so it's leveling it out. So it wasn't flat at all before, now it is. This is the reason I like to paint versus powder coat, because you can get everything super smooth. A lot of work though. Alex Pohl, look at him on, on Instagram. He hand bends these, he sent me one. We're gonna, we're gonna start carrying these on our website. I'm not even gonna show you how it goes on. I'm sure you have an idea, but I'm gonna paint it, then I'll show you. Transforming this place into a Paint booth, huh? I'll save all this. This will be like the perfect setup. I'll just trim my uh, tape and I'll have a paint booth. Oh, oh look, a few chickens. Yeah, I, I still need to set up all this. I've got this, it's real messy in here because we're <laughs> polishing wheels at the same time, but this will go down, the garage door will go down. I still need to cover this up and then uh, the fan will blow that stuff out and I got a HEPA filter that goes in front of the fan. 
This is like the heavy dutiness right here. It's actually pretty bright in here. But the floor, I'm, I'm totally overdoing this, but I'm gonna keep this sucker. Now the fun part, clean the gun. This is the primary gun. We've got a whole other gun for paint. This is, a, this stuff's just fun. If you, if you didn't think it's fun, then you shouldn't do it because this is so time consuming. Thank you.